Okay, we're recording this video. It is Monday, 13th of July, 2015. It's 4.39 a.m. Chicago time. Uh, it's kind of mid-evening here in Sydney, Australia. European markets are open at the moment, and we've just had news that the Greeks have done a deal with the rest of their Eurozone partners. Uh, must admit, doesn't sound like much of a good deal. And I think uh, the Prime Minister Cyprus you know, runs a bit of a risk of being lynched when he heads home. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Yeah, for God's sake, just rip the Band-Aid off. Uh, they can't stay in the Euro uh, zone. It's, it's the thing that's absolutely killing them. I mean, the beauty of floating exchange rates, that they can go up and go down, and all of this kind of pain uh, would have been uh, you know, somewhat negated by having just an extremely weak currency instead of being stuck in the Euro. But anyway, it is what it is. You know, these politicians hate bad news. So uh, we will continue to revisit this Greek story you know, for the coming weeks and months and years, probably. But I'm not going to talk about the markets. I'm going to talk about the average trade size indicator that I showed in a couple of screenshots in the last uh, video, uh, last update I did, blog post I did. Every time I put up the average trade size indicator, I got a bunch of people saying, how did you do that? How did you calculate the average trade size? Now, I am going to warn you now that when you see this video, you will kick yourself. If you do not know how to do this, and I show you how this indicator works, you will just say, that is so easy, why didn't I figure that out? So I'm not holding out that this is some kind of magic that I'm you know, providing in this indicator. It is so simple and straightforward. But anyway, I warn you now, you'll kick yourself when you see how it works. So. I suppose this is mainly for kind of trade station users, but all the other charting platforms, you know, multi charts, ninja trader and so on, are so similar in this respect. Although the, the commands, you know, the way you kind of manipulate charts aren't identical, they're so so close. So you can use exactly the same principle to uh, generate an indicator in ninja trader or multi charts. Uh, let's get to it. What I've done here is I pulled up a chart of the E-mini. It's a daily chart. It's the continuous contract, so it's at ES. I'm just looking at the day time, the day session data, so it's dot D. So that's at ES dot D. Now, to pull out these two vital pieces of information, I'm not putting this on just a regular chart. I'm putting this on a 1440 minute chart. To calculate the average trade size for the day, you need two pieces of information. The total number of contracts traded, the total volume that day, and you divide that by the total number of trades, or ticks if you like, that happened during that day. So it's one divided by the other. Both of those two uh, pieces of information are available in your data feeds. You just need to adjust the chart a fraction in order to pull the two pieces of data out. If I look at the format symbol here for these two, uh, for this chart, there are actually two underlying data streams on this chart. One is shown and one is hidden. Uh, they're both of at ES.D, so both the E-mini continuous contract, day session only, with one minor, minor change between them. So I'm just going to look at the first one and show you how that is formatted. The piece of information here you need to look at is for volume use. So this is a 1440 minute chart, so that's there are 1440 minutes in a 24 hour period. So we're just pulling up an intraday chart, if you like, rather than a, just a day chart. And it gives me for volume use trade volume. If I would set this to daily, I wouldn't get any of those settings there. So that's why I need to pull up the minute piece of it, 1440 for volume use trade volume. So on data one, I'm using trade volume. But look at this, when I go to data two, it's identical except for volume use tick count. So I'm given two different ways of counting volume. I can either use the trade volume, the total number of contracts, or the total number of trades, or the tick counts. So one piece of data here in this chart is using total volume and one is using total number of trades. So there's two data streams in here and to show you those two pieces of volume data I've got the canned indicator from TradeStation here for volume down below. This one is showing that this is on uh, Friday's trade we had 1.2 million contracts traded and you can see on this volume indicator when I go format volume 
when I go to general, I can base the study on either data 1 or data 2. I select data 1 and therefore it's looking at the trade volume. Bingo, so 1.2 million contracts traded. However, in this second volume indicator, I'm counting the trade the number of trades, the tick count, and that's 381,000 uh, for Friday. So go to that uh, format indicator and you can see this study is based on data 2 which is for volume I'm using tick count. So one chart, two pieces of data, the price bars are identical but one is running with the volume being counted and one is running with the number of trades being counted and then all I do is create a super simple little indicator here called average trade size and I'm just going to show you what this looks like in my editor for easy language very easy here it's one divided by the other now there are some little kind of funny things about TradeStation and tick charts and minute charts and so on and some inconsistencies about how volume uh, is counted and so on the most consistent way of counting volume in charts in TradeStation is to add together these two pieces of data which is called up ticks plus down ticks. It's, it's total volume or total number of trades depending on which is selected for that kind of uh, piece of data um, but it's not just a straight V for volume. You use up ticks plus down ticks. Trust me that'll get you out of a whole bunch of problems. It's taken, it took me a couple of years when you know, we first had kind of the trade station. They started, you know, going into tick charts and so on back in the day to figure out these little nuances. And it's a little thing, but it will actually kind of get you out of a lot of trouble. And it's consistent across tick charts, minute charts, and day charts. But anyway, counting volume. I set a variable, call it S. And S is the upticks plus down ticks of data 1 divided by the upticks plus of data 2 and the down ticks of data 2. So data 2 is counting the number of trades, data 1 is counting the volume. So it's total volume divided by total number of trades. I just check that I'm not dividing by 0 here at the beginning of this expression and that's my calculation for the average. Total volume divided by total number of trades and I calculate an average over 100 bars and plot that down below and that is this indicator here you'll see a couple of spikes uh, in this and little gaps kind of here. So if you can look at this particular day, we had very low trade number of trades, very low volume, and the average trade size kind of kicked up a little bit on that day. It's a bit more extreme on this day where we had very few number of trades, very few volume going here, and the average trade size kicked up. Those are rollover days. Again, remember I'm using the continuous contract and TradeStation rolls, I believe, kind of a day early uh, to the, the newest kind of contract and that's when the volume is not going through here on that rollover day. It's actually going through the historic, you know, the last uh, kind of contract there. But the volume is light on those days and it tends to just kick up uh, in terms of putting the average trade size up. You'll find that kind of going back historically. So, are you kicking yourself? Uh, if you didn't know how to do this, this is how to do it. It's kind of super simple, just putting two data streams, you know, on together with different, you know, variations for uh, the either the volume being uh, measured or the number of trades being measured, and just calculating the difference between the two. I'll do a little screen grab of the uh, Easy Language code, uh, kind of below uh, this video. I don't think it's worth kind of releasing any kind of particular code here. Uh, it is kind of straightforward. Uh, but there you go. If you've always wondered, you know, how I calculate this average trade size, there we go. I wish it was filled of kind of, you know, magic and bells and whistles, but it ain't. It's really super simple. So uh, hope that helped you. And uh, looking forward to a fascinating, another fascinating week's trading.